it going everybody? Welcome back to Teak and Builds. My name is Ty Campbell and in this week's episode we are continuing with our Team Losi Racing 8XE electric four wheel drive eight scale buggy build. Last week we covered basically the entire buggy build up to almost rolling chassis status. Our chassis is pretty much assembled and ready to accept our electronics. We just need to assemble our motor mount and get that in which we are going to cover in our motor install. Once our motor is installed, we will go ahead and install our T250 steering servo, and then we're going to install our RX-8 Gen 3 and do all of our soldering. So let's get started on our electronics, starting with our motor. Now this is our Gen 3 motor that we're gonna install in our eight scale buggy kit. So let's go ahead and crack this box open. So we've got the Gen 3, this is a 1900 kV motor. And then we've also got the shielded sensor wire. Now this is actually TLR's new motor mount setup. And if you can picture how this sits in the car, it's gonna sit about like this. The motor actually slides through these clamps and then you tighten this screw down and that clamps down on this motor and holds it nice and secure. Now there are three different size O-rings for this clamp setup provided in the kit. Our motors are a 40 millimeter motor, but because the clamps grab around the ribbing, we're gonna actually, this is actually a 42 millimeter motor with the ribbing. So you're gonna have to figure out which one of these O-rings, there's three different sizes. So we've got this size, this size, and this size. So I'm gonna go with the one that TLR recommends for 42 millimeter cans. Assembling this motor mount is pretty easy. All you have to do is pop each one of these O-rings into the, each slot, there's four of them, into this clamp motor mount. Now once you've got the O-rings inside the TLR motor clamp, you just want to line these guys up a little bit so that we can slide these over our motor. And you just want to get them close because we're going to throw it in the car and then that'll set the spacing on them. And before we mount our motor in the chassis, we want to undo this screw right here holding the sensor wire clip. This is what holds the sensor wire nice and tight to the back of the motor. Just gives it some added protection and a little bit more insurance that it doesn't pop out during a run. So all you have to do is loosen up this screw, take your sensor wire, and pop that into this clip, and then reinstall that clip on the back of the motor. Then we'll want to take the entire motor clamp assembly with the motor and set it in the chassis. Just get it close. And we're not going to clamp any of this down yet because we're still going to have to shift this in order to line our pinion up to our spur gear. Now that our motor is loosely mounted, we're going to want to mount up our pinion gear. So we're just going to put a little dab of Loctite on the pinion set screw threads. Slide this onto our motor shaft. We need this loose so that we can line these up. So you want to get both of these as in line as possible. And we can go ahead and tighten down our set screw. Now for gear mesh, you'll want to set these to where you've got just a little bit of rock in the spur gear. So if it's too tight, you'll want to move the motor out away from the spur gear. So slide it out this way. So you'll want it to where it just barely rocks a little bit. Too loose, it'll be noisy. Too tight, it'll be noisy and rob you of some power and might make your motor get a little hot. Once you tighten down the motor clamp screws, just go ahead and check it again. I like to rotate this about 90 degrees four times and make sure that you've got knock everywhere. Now for clocking our motor position, you'll want to have these tabs pointed over here so that they're away from the outside of the car. And this might change the mesh just a little bit so after tightening this clamp down you probably just want to recheck the mesh. Now these are actually our motor clamp screws so same thing like we always do with any screws going into aluminum. We are going to put some Loctite on it so it doesn't come loose. Once 
once we snug those down, our motor should be nice and tight. Shouldn't be able to twist. And that looks pretty good. Our T8 is sitting nicely in that motor mount. Let's move on to getting our servo installed. Now the T250. Now some of you are probably wondering what the numbers mean for each servo's designation. And it's pretty simple. Basically that 250 on this T250 means you can expect about 250 ounces of torque at six volts. Now we rated them at seven, four and at eight volts. So the torque is obviously gonna change as is the speed. I'm gonna run this on our RX8's high voltage BEC. So we should expect more around 300 ounces of torque and a 0.08 second transit speed versus the 0.09 at six volts. So in our servo box, we've got our T250 servo. We've got our crowbar clamping servo horn. Up here in the top, we've got all your standard servo goodies. There is actually a plastic servo arm in here that has an aluminum collar that goes around it. It's actually a really good plastic servo arm if you ever need to run anything that's lightweight. Otherwise, we're just gonna use the clamping crowbar design. To mount our servo, we'll just go ahead and feed it into the TLR servo mount. You wanna fish this wire through. This is actually gonna go into our receiver box. And then use the included M3 by 12 millimeter socket cap screws with a washer. I don't have a receiver in yet, but we'll go ahead and just fish this through into our receiver box. Pretty straightforward mounting the servo in the car. It's just like any other standard servo you would see out there. Now let's get into our RX-8 wiring so we can power this thing up and actually center our servo, set our EPAs, and then we'll go into some ESC programming. This is everything that you'll get in the RX-8 Gen 3 packaging. Obviously you'll get the RX-8 Gen 3 itself, the fan pack with the necessary hardware to mount the fan. There are also four small screws to mount via this bolt pattern on the bottom of the ESC, should you choose to do so. There is the wire. This also has the hot wire data cable in here for plugging into the data fan port and uh, three pieces of 12 gauge wire. We've got our ESC manual. Make sure you keep this handy because it's got all kinds of troubleshooting tips. The quick start guide is in there and should you have any issues, all the warranty information is in here. These two are basically just if you have a hot wire and you want to plug into this ESC, make sure you go get the latest hot wire off of our website or off of the Play Store so that it will connect to the RX-8 Gen 3. Now let's figure out where we're going to mount this in our 8XE. First, we're going to mount TLR's ESC plate into the car. Always Loctite into aluminum. I already put double-sided tape on the bottom of my RX-8 Gen 3. We're just gonna mount it on the TLR electronics plate. Probably sit something about like this. So the RX-8 Gen 3 is now mounted. I went ahead and just used double-sided tape like I showed earlier and it's in there nice and solid. It shouldn't move anywhere. And I also routed the receiver wire back under here. I actually went underneath the motor can and then the wire fits right in between the mud guard and the actual motor mount clamps. And then just ran it right down the side of the car and into the receiver box. And I did that just to keep it away from any moving parts because I don't want it to get chewed up in the spur gear. Now that the ESC is mounted, we can go ahead and start wiring it up to our motor and get our battery plug on. Now that it's time to solder our ESC into our car, there are a few little tools that will make things easier. I love this jig. This is called the Jigs Up. You can get this online. It's fairly inexpensive and it's got all kinds of positions and stuff. It can hold plugs. It just makes soldering a lot easier. It's like having a second set of hands available. We just need our 12 gauge wire. This is what we're going to use for our motor and our battery connections. So the first thing we want to do is strip the end of our wire. And I normally like to take off, you know, about five, six millimeters, not a whole lot because you just need a little bit of wire showing. That'll make tinning it easier. So all we want to do is take our wire stripper, use the 12 gauge, 
and just strip a little bit off the end. Give those wires a good twist. And then we're gonna place this in our soldering jig. Nice clean iron tip. We're gonna go ahead and blow some solder onto there. And then we're going to tin the end of this wire. Now tinning just prepares the wire for better adhesion to the solder post. So you don't wanna overdo it with your solder, you just wanna get some into the strands. And we're gonna to wanna to do that with five different pieces of wire. So we're gonna do that same procedure each time to prepare our wire to solder onto our RX-8 posts. We're gonna do the same thing on our ESC posts. We're going to tin them. So clean iron, little bit of solder on the iron tip, and then you're just gonna to wanna to put it into this solder pocket on the RX-8 posts. Flow a little bit of solder. Don't go crazy with it because we don't want too much. And we're gonna do that for each of our five solder posts. Now we're gonna take our pre-tinned wire and to wire up this ESC, I'm actually going to stand my wires up coming out of the posts and then route them over and then attach them to the motor tabs. Now I'm gonna route the wires this way because that puts any tension or any weight pulling the tabs towards the front of the motor. And there's a rivet holding the solder tab to this phenolic board in the back of the motor. You can put the wires off the back. I don't recommend it just because then you've got some tension pulling that and it's gonna to wanna to pull that rivet out. So now we're gonna take our tinned wire and our tinned ESC post and we're going to solder them together. Clean iron tip, a little bit of solder float on there. And we are going to heat up the wire just a little bit, heat up the post. We're gonna bring them together and apply heat to both of them. This should only take two or three seconds at the most. If you can't hold the wire this close to your solder joint, it's too hot, you're gonna get solder flowing up into the strands, which is gonna make the wire really stiff and you're gonna risk getting a cold solder joint. So now that we've got this wire, this is our A-phase wire. We're gonna route this how we want it to be routed. We wanna keep them somewhat short. So I'll probably run mine about like this and then we'll just clip it at the length that we want. I'm gonna strip this back just like we did on this side. I'm gonna tin the wire. I'm gonna tin the solder tab on the 1900T8 and then we're gonna use the same process for soldering it up to the ESC. All right, so we got all of our wires soldered up. We've got our three leads to the motor and then we've got our battery connector. Now we just need to plug the sensor wire in and you can get shorter versions of these. This is a 200 millimeter sensor wire. We do do a 150. So for installs where the ESC is pretty close to the motor, it's pretty handy to have a shorter version. But this can tuck right down next to the ESC and just plug right into the sensor port. Now we're gonna make sure that we didn't hook our positive negative up backwards. So we've got positive going down to the positive which is between the C and B phase on the RX-8 so moment of truth all right so everything looks good you can see that the RX-8 is flashing all right now that means no radio signal is detected and that's because I don't have the radio powered up and the receiver is not in the car so I'll toss a receiver in and then we can dive into getting our servo set up and then we'll set up our RX-8. Setting up our servo is really easy. All you need to do is make sure that your transmitter is bound to your receiver and then go ahead and power on the car and that will let the servo find center. So servo is on, just make sure. Now make sure that it is centered before you go any further. We're gonna go ahead and hook up our steering linkage with our 20 millimeter crowbar arm. You wanna make sure that this comes off the servo about 90 degrees. That way you get your left and right throws equal. So we've got that on there. Looks like our steering throw is backwards right now. So we're gonna reverse our steering. Once we reverse our steering, just verify it's turned the right way. So this left, right, 
Then we're gonna set our endpoints or the EPAs, the endpoint adjustments in the transmitter. This could be under a couple different things depending on your transmitter. Usually it's under something called travel or servo or something along those lines. So once you're in the travel menu, you just wanna go ahead and turn all the way one direction. And you can see that this is turning too far and tweaking our receiver box a little bit. So we're gonna turn the left throw down just a bit. There we go. Now we'll do the right side. There we go. So we got left and right EPA set. Once that's all set, you'll just wanna put the screw in the top of here, tighten down these two clamping screws. That'll actually clamp the servo horn onto the spline gear and then put that top screw in just to hold everything together. Now we just have to do some initial setup on our RX-8. The factory settings, I highly recommend just starting with those and then you can dial it in wherever you want to. But the first thing we need to do is make sure our transmitter is bound up to our receiver and then we're gonna do a radio calibrate on the ESC. So we turn this on and it should find neutral. All right, so our receiver is putting out an acceptable neutral signal. So the ESC accepted that armed and is now ready to drive. Make sure that your throttle trim is centered and then to perform a radio calibration, all you do is press the mode button. This starts the sequence, finds neutral first and it found it. Now it's flashing up here on this side, increment side, looking for full throttle. So pull full throttle on your transmitter. It accepted full throttle. So now we want a full brake signal, push full brake. And we are calibrated and ready to go and it should flash over to this side and then back to center. That's your onboard heat indicator. So right now it's at ambient temperature and it will climb the ladder up towards the right hand side or the increment button side as the ESC heats up. So that's a good temperature indicator on there. The last thing we want to do is set our voltage cutoff. The RX-8 comes out of the box with a 2S LiPo cutoff. So if we're going to be running 4 cell in our e-buggy, we need to set it for 4 cell. Now it's super easy, you can do it on board with the buttons. All you wanna do is push this mode button seven times up to VC, hit increment, that enters the setting. There's two lights showing, that's 2S. So we hit it two more times, four, that's four cell. Let it rearm. And now we're ready to go drive. That's all the time we have for today. We made some great progress on our 8X e build. We got our ESC installed and soldered up. We got our motor installed and soldered up. We hooked up our T250 steering servo and got that all ready to go. Next week, we're gonna get into mounting up some tires and then just doing a final setup and screw check on this car just to make sure everything is tight and give it a shakedown run. I really hope you're enjoying the build so far. I'm having fun putting a new eight scale buggy together and I can't wait to get out and actually do some racing. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. Like the video if you liked it. Go ahead and share with your friends so they can join in on the fun. I'm Ty Campbell and I'll see you next week for another episode of Teak and Builds.